Hey everyone, I'm Joel on the road and today my UNESCO World Heritage Journey is at the historic centre of Avignon in southern France. So today we're in the historic city of Avignon in southern France and despite being a backwater for over a thousand years, this suddenly was thrust into the centre of world politics in the 14th century when Pope Clement V moved his court right here. And for the next almost a hundred years, this was the centre of the papacy. Now being the home of the Pope meant that the city underwent a massive transformation and one that's still reflected today. Let's check it out. Behind me, you can see the Papal Palace here in Avignon, and it was the seat of the popes for over a hundred years, seven of them in fact, as well as two anti-popes as well. And if you think it looks a lot like a fortress, well, it is. It was a fortress to keep the Pope safe, because in those days it was a very, very dangerous occupation. And you might be wondering, why did the popes end up here in Avignon? Well, the reason is actually political, not religious, because the King of France did not like Italians having so much influence over his subjects. And so a mixture of trickery, cunning and outright murder got a Frenchman into the papal chair. So the seat moved here and it stayed here for a hundred years before a massive split within the church ended up with three simultaneous popes. Eventually things settled down and the popes returned to Rome. And the palace itself is incredible because it's the largest Gothic building anywhere in the world from the Middle Ages and it's really beautiful as well. Now unfortunately I'm not allowed to film inside so I can't show you what it looks like in there though from what I've heard it's actually quite plain and uninspiring. Behind me is the Cathedral of Avignon, dedicated to Our Lady of Doms. Now, it dates from the early 15th century, so it actually comes slightly after the papal period here, but it was certainly very important because it's connected to the palace. Now, it's built in a Romanesque style as well, and though it was heavily damaged during the revolution of the 18th century, it's been reconstructed since then. Behind me, you can see the Pont d'Avignon, and it dates from the middle of the 14th century. And it's a beautiful stone bridge, and it's a fantastic example as well of the money and the prestige that the popes brought to the city with them. Now, you might be thinking it's not very useful as a bridge because it just ends in the middle of the river. And, well, obviously, there was more to it than this. There was originally 22 stone arches. There's only four remaining. They had a tendency to collapse when the river flooded. Now there's also, on this pier behind me, a church that actually predates the stone archways. That's from the middle of the 12th century. Being the centre of the Catholic religion has its benefits because of course the Pope brought with him to Avignon cardinals, secretaries and all sorts of other workers and almost overnight the city was transformed with new tradesmen and journeymen coming to supply luxuries that the court was used to having in Rome. And this street here, Rue de Tentroyer, is a fantastic example of that. This used to be lined with tradesmen's houses where they would produce silks and other fancy fabrics. But that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Joel on the road and I'll see you at the next World Heritage site.